Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be about whether or not quantity surveying is a dying profession. So I've had this question asked to me in a very familiar form, which is assignment-like form. I think we also had a topic in Varsity where we had to answer whether or not QS is a dying profession or whether we'll still be needed years from now on. And let's get on into the video. Disclaimer, this video contains more opinion than facts. Not a lot of research was conducted, so please do not quote me in any research papers, assignments, or any other medium that requires professional, fact-checked, and accredited opinions. Thanks. Quantity surveying is a profession that dates back to the 18th century in the United Kingdom, when construction projects were measured and valued after they were designed and built. The measurers would quantify and assign a value to the work after the building was constructed and then negotiate with the client and architect on behalf of the tradesman. That to me sounds so fair because how things work now is actually in reverse. You first price, measure and then you get to build and most of the time it does not go according to plan so whatever you've priced for, whatever you've built ends up costing more and you are at a loss. By the early 19th century, a new contractor system resulted in price competition before construction. Quantity surveyors developed the skill of pre-measuring quantities from drawings and assembling them in bills of quantities before construction began. The quantity surveying profession today has greatly evolved. Today's quantity surveyors are a key part of the construction and financial management process, including cost estimating, forecasting, cost management, construction techniques and management, procurement processes, and contractual matters. So what is the role of quantity surveyors today? Number one is conducting feasibility studies to estimate material, time, and labor costs. Number two is preparing and analyzing costs and quantities for tenders and contracts. And number three is advising on a range of legal and contractual issues. So from what the roles of a quantity surveyors are today, I picked up that it's three themes really. So it's financial, it's quantitative, and it's also legal. In other words, it's an accountant, it's an engineer, and it's a lawyer. So now let's talk about the big fuss about technology taking away our beloved profession. Let's talk about BIM. It's a software that shows you what the building is like. 3D and everything. So what is the purpose of BIM? What are the advantages of it? Why should we use it? Why is it happening? Why is it scaring us? Let's go through the list. Better collaboration and communication. Model-based cost estimation. Pre-construction project visualization. Improved coordination and clash detection. Reduced cost and mitigated risks. Improved uh, scheduling or sequencing, increased productivity and prefabrication, safer construction sites, better builds, stronger facility management and handover. So what does all of this mean for the quantity surveyor's role? I mean, BIM is here telling us that it's going to measure better, it's going to make it easier for cost management is going to make sure that you can pick up clashing design errors. It's it's just going to make life easier. Why do you need a quantity survey? I still strongly believe that the basics of how it all starts is still so important. So as a QS, you need to know what the system is doing for you to understand the system. The idea of measuring might not be as important as it used to be because there's BIM now and it's probably going to be better and a little bit more accurate. But there's still so many other factors that make up what a quantity surveyor is that all we need to do is just evolve and learn how to use BIM. Another point I'd like to add under the measuring aspect is that when you're working for a contractor like me, you are often required to physically go to site and measure what they've done so that you can pay them for that specific amount of work. You walk with the person, you see what they've done, especially if there's a lot of other subcontractors that you might be working with, see what they've done and then come in and still update it on the system, which would be probably a smoother process, but you still need to go in and see. So some people have argued that uh, civil engineers have been measuring their own um, work, doing pretty much doing what a quantity there does in their own site, which is true but it still has not scraped out quantity surveyors. This is 
solely or from my experience because civil engineers are mostly based on infrastructure projects which are usually your roads and your bridges which don't have a complex trade structure even today there's less quantity surveyors working on roads but more quantity surveyors working in commercial sites but you still have quantity surveyors that are in those fields that factor has not wiped out the requirements of a cure as i mentioned earlier the key components that make up a quantity surveyor are quantitative legal and um what's the other one financial yes that's why QSing was created. It's a merge of all these lovely other careers into one to make it as accurate and as clear as possible. So we're still a long way from it being totally wiped out. I truly believe that the QS role will just evolve just as it has been evolving throughout the years. I mean, we don't do things the way it was done initially when it first started. And if it does die out, do not say that I said it won't. We don't know what the future <laughs> holds, but at the current trajectory, it will not die out. It will just evolve and the onus is on you and me to keep up with technology, stay on our toes, work smarter, don't be hard-headed and try to do things the old-fashioned way when there's easier ways to do or an easier method of doing things. But yes, for now, there's still a need for quantity surveys and it's not dying out just as yet. I hope that this video was insightful and then you got some pointers to think about and if i missed something or i hit a blind spot or I didn't think of something else please let me know in the comments and we can all discuss it and talk about it because it is such a big topic of conversation and it's a question that comes up a lot anyway thank you for watching this video i hope that you've learned something or you found something or it was not a waste of your time please like and subscribe and let me know what you want us to talk about next see you later in another video Mm-hmm.